Hello, Storybook Matinee audience. Miss Society here in my fancy orange dress that I was going to wear to Passover and then again to Easter. But this year, since I'm not going anywhere for Passover or for Easter, I thought I'd put this dress on just for you and wear it while I'm reading this story. Our story today is Welcome to Hideaway Hollow. And it's a book about a group of rabbits, some raccoons, and a carrot patch. I hope that whether you celebrate Passover or Easter, you have a pleasant time with your family, celebrating the spring holidays. Why don't you go grab a carrot and munch it while we're reading our story? I'll wait for you. Welcome to Hideaway Hollow. Hideaway Hollow, written by Bill Kirchner and illustrated by Christy Jensen Piero. Once upon a time, on the other side of a big patch of daisies and behind an old red barn, there lived a settlement of rabbits nestled away in the ruins of a crumbled stone wall. Kachoo! Old Calhoun sneezed. Puff went the daisy petals, and everything and everyone zoomed through the air. Great whiskers, cried Granny Twiggins. That dog's a nuisance. He sneezed my clean wash into the dirt again. Such a mess, Tilly Tibbets exclaimed. That hound's allergies are trying my patience. Why, just this morning, he blew Officer O'Hare right into the mud. Oh, no, for the second time this week. If it wasn't for our carrot patch, we should have moved from here long ago. Something must be done. So that afternoon, a meeting was called, and all the rabbits were hopping mad. Mud all over my uniform. My laundry. Let's move. Everyone was talking at once. One at a time, please, said Benjamin Tibbets. We need to move. We've outgrown our town. I can't teach my bunnies in that old lettuce crate. We need more room, a proper school. How can I keep carrots safe in an old coffee can? We need a bank. And Daisy Delphinium sniffed. I can't stand the thought of getting married in a toolbox. I want a church wedding. <laughs> She's crying. Just then, Grandpa Twiggin spoke up. Everyone listened because he was the oldest and wisest rabbit in the whole settlement. There was a place I visited once when I was just a little bunny, down the lane and past a pond. I remember there was the prettiest little hollow I've ever seen, all hidden away. What's a pond? asked Tulip, for you see, Tulip, being a very young bunny, had never been past the stone wall. Let's move, let's move, we'll build a new town, the group all shouted. That sounds perfect, said Benjamin. We can build a new town in Grandpa Twiggins Hollow. Here are some signs. That says the Twiggins. This one says no more Calhoun. And this one says we want to move. The next morning, everyone was busy packing for the move. Carts were filled and dishes packed until the last thing loaded on the cart was Grandpa Twiggins, still sitting in his rocker. Officer O'Hare, do you have the carrot seeds? What would we do without them, worried Granny Twiggins. I've got them right here, and they'll be safe. So down the trail, they hopped. All the small bunnies thought this was quite an adventure and kept stopping to see all the new sights. Hop to it, bunnies, said Mr. Crabtree. I don't want any of you getting lost. And of course, Officer O'Hare kept close watch on the carrot seeds. And old Calhoun is crying. He doesn't want to see the bunnies go. Two days of traveling took the rabbits down the trail, over the meadow, and past the pond. What are those? Tulip questioned when she saw the frogs sunning themselves on the lily pads. 
They're frogs, said Mr. Crabtree, and that's a fish. Wow, is all she could say. At last, the bunny bunch scurried up a grassy hill, and there down below was the hollow. Our new home, exclaimed Benjamin. Oh, at last, sighed Granny. Yep, just as I remembered, said Grandpa, as he rocked back and forth. We'll start building our new town tomorrow. There are so many daisies in all the pictures. I think daisies are so cheerful. During the next few days, the rabbits were hard at work. The sound of stone hammers and nettleberry saws sounded through the hollow. Piles of thatching were gathered for roofs and stacks of new bricks were made. Bunny buildings were springing up all around like mushrooms. This is the bank and it says 24 carat bank. Just a hair to the right. No, no, to the left, directed Banker Full Pockets, as the sign over the bank was lifted into place. Ah, uh, a proper place to put my safe and store the carrots. Great whiskers! There are buildings going up everywhere. With all that's going on, I hope it won't be too late to plant the carrots. Are the seeds safe? Have no fear. I've hidden them in the roots of the old oak tree till we're ready to plant them. Look at there's someone spying in that tree. It looks like a raccoon. Days passed quickly and turned into weeks and the rabbits had completely forgotten about planting their carrots. Oh no. Then one day late in the summer, the village was complete. The rabbits were all looking at their new town. When Tulip asked, when do we plant the carrots? Everyone looked at each other in shock. With all the flurry of building and getting the town finished, they had completely forgotten to plant the crop. What will we do? There are not enough carrots in the bank to get us through the winter. We had better plant the seeds fast, and at least we'll have some small carrots and greens to get us by, said Benjamin. Officer O'Hare, you'd better get the seeds. We'll plant today. What a tragedy. All the rabbits gathered outside the cafe. Tilly Tibbets passed out shovels and hose to the older rabbits, while Mr. Crabtree gave rakes and watering cans to the bunnies. But where's O'Hare, asked Granny. He's supposed to bring the seeds. Suddenly, Officer O'Hare came running down the lane. Robbers, bandits, all the seeds are gone, he cried. Oh, this is getting worse by the minute. He led everyone to the oak tree where the seeds had been hidden, and sure enough, they were gone. What are we to do now? We won't have any carrots. But why do we need more carrots, questioned Parsnip. There's a big patch of them right over that hill. The bandits must have stolen our seeds and planted them there, replied Officer O'Hare. I'll get to the bottom of this. There are all the carrots. When carrots grow in the ground, the orange part sticks down in the earth and only the very tops and the green part is what we see until you pull it out and then you see the whole orange carrot. Slowly they crept up the green knoll, inch by inch, paw by paw, as they edged their way to the top. There, yelled Parsnip, there they are. The seed snatchers looked up at the rabbits on top of the hill and no one said a word. They were the strangest creatures tulips had ever seen. Some had tiny little ears and others big striped bushy tails. Let's get out of here, cried Parsnip, but Benjamin caught him before he could scamper away. And then a really funny thing happened. Surprise, yelled the bandits as they waved to the rabbits. And again, no one said, a word. Welcome to the hollow, greeted one of the bandits. I'm Stripes. My friends and I live in Pine Oak Woods, just on the other side of the meadow. When you were moving in, I heard you say that you were so busy building your town that you might be late planting your seeds. I got everyone together, and as a surprise, we planted them for you. Wow, 
is all Tulip could say. This calls for a celebration, said Grandpa. Wasn't that kind of the raccoons? They didn't even know the rabbits. They were strangers helping strangers. That night, everyone met in the hollow for a big party. Baskets bulged with carrot cakes, greens, and candy nuts. We need more lettuce rolls and acorn crunchies, said Buttercup. Oh, this is such a lovely little hideaway hollow, said Tilly. Hideaway hollow, repeated Benjamin Tibbets. That's what we're gonna call our new home. And still we see all those daisies. They're everywhere. <laughs> Look at the raccoon's tail under the table. It's so nice that they became friends. Let's all dance, called the Pine Oak Pass Fiddlers as they struck up a lively tone. It's time for the full moon fiddling frolic. Wait for us, shouted the cattail croners as they croaked in three-part harmony. And soon the party goers were all dancing and singing in the square. <laughs> Look at the frogs in their dresses. Look at what their lanterns are. They're fireflies in jars. Great whiskers, cried Granny Twiggins as she twirled in her fancy dance skirt. A brand new village, new friends, and the best carrot patch ever. You just never know what to expect in Hideaway Hollow. The end. What a nice book about new friends helping each other and then celebrating. <laughs>